Hello. I, uh, we've been sitting for a long time. Everyone's, everyone's, everyone's behind is getting a little tired. I'm going to try to make it a little lively for you. I know I was falling asleep, not because of the talks, but because I fall asleep easily. I am Jai Runganathan, and I am an ecologist at UC Santa Barbara. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to, um, to tell you a story. And it's a story about this giant logo called the Sci-Fun Challenge. So what is the Sci-Fun Challenge? That's a great question, me. So the Sci-Fun Challenge is an experiment. Can scientists use crowdfunding to raise money for their research? Now, we all know as scientists here that finding a, a cash is getting harder and harder to come by. NSF money, NIH money, private foundation money, getting harder and harder. Can we use this new way of internet fundraising to work for science? Well, before we get to that, let's back up a step and ask, what is crowdfunding? And you know, there's, a, there's an obvious place to talk about that, and that's RoboCop. Because, well, who, what is RoboCop? He's defender of the meek, stop, stopper of corporate titans. But he's also key to the, um, to, to the crowdfunding story. There were some citizens of Detroit a couple of months back who said, you know what Detroit needs? We need a big metal statue of, Detroit, of Ro RoboCop in Detroit. That's going to make everything better. <laughs> so what did they do? They went to a site called Kickstarter. And they put up this proposal for saying, hey, we want to put a big metal statue in Ro of RoboCop in Detroit. It's going to turn everything around. And they got almost 3,000 people to kick in, almost $70,000. $50 here, $100 there, $3 here. You pool it all together, and you do something great. Well, I don't know if you call this great. It's, it's certainly big. Um, but that's the idea of crowdfunding, is that you're taking the model that charities have used for a long time, the Red Cross, World Wildlife Fund, where you take a little bit of money from you, 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 pool it together, and do something great with it. And crowdfunding, through sites like Kickstarter and others, uh, takes that uh, to many more organizations. And in fact, so this is just for Kickstarter alone. This is the growth of their funding. The x-axis here is the year. You can't really see the dates too well, but the left is uh, April 09. The right is April 2011. And the right is millions of dollars in pledges coming into Kickstarter. And this is not cumulative. This is what's happening every month. And you can see it's growing exponentially, the amount of funding that's coming in through this one site alone. And in fact, in the world of the arts, if you're doing a book, you're doing a movie, you're doing a play, you're putting on a dance, doing a crowdfunding campaign is now the way, one of the key ways to raise money for your work. And it's not only for your work, and it is working. But what about science? Well, there have been some earlier efforts to get science crowdfunding going on. They all kind of failed for various reasons we can talk about later. So we thought, let's try something different. Let's try something with no budget whatsoever and no time whatsoever. That's going to work much better. <laughs> so what is it? So we put out a call for scientists to want to through, our, through a blog to say, hey, we want you to crowdfund for your own research. And we had over about 70 scientists who were actually going to be run, doing it. And we had a very high bar for the scientists we'd accept, a very high bar. You had to want to do it. So that if, you met, if you met that bar, you were in. It's going to be running from November 1st to December 15th on Rocket Hub. Now, the amount, now every single scientist is going to be crowdfunding for their own project um, and for small amounts. You can say it's roughly 5,000 bucks. Well, there's, a bit, there's a range there, but 5,000 bucks is not a lot of money. But the reason we're doing it this way is crowdfunding is a totally different way of raising cash. It is nothing like an NSF proposal, nothing like an NIH proposal. So the idea is to start small have a success at this level, learn the techniques, and then build from here to strength, to strength, to strength. So the next time you do this, it's not $5,000, it's $50,000, it's $100,000. And it's taking place on Rocket Hub, where, which we are partnered with. So the key thing here is that even though each scientist is going to be crowdfunding on their, for their own project, no scientist is alone. 
We're all working together. And you know, it's funny, I was thinking about math overflow is that we also had a very similar kind of problem in that, you know, we have you know, almost 100 scientists coming together who want to talk about 100 different projects. How do we get them to engage, given the fact that we have no budget and we're also not very good coders either? So at least math overflow, I don't know what their budget was, clearly some, they're mathematicians, they gotta be awesome coders. I am a ghetto coder, so that didn't work. So what did we do? But because the point here is not just the cash, but engagement, to, engagement in a couple kinds of engagement to get the scientists who are each alone to learn how to crowdfund. A key part of, for example, there are all these new techniques. You have to be able to engage with the general public, something scientists are usually pretty bad at. You know, in fact, that's half the point here, is how do you do it? I don't know what's making that sound, but it sounds like a gunshot is going off every so often. But that's just to highlight my major points. <laughs> so, it's engagement. Engagement with other scientists so that we are all working together. Because if you are alone as a scientist, say, hey, you, you have to learn how to do all these new things. You have to know how to create a, a, a video presentation. You have to be able to translate your science to the general public. Forget it. Impossible for someone doing it alone. But it's also about engagement to larger audiences, to the general public, and to create incentives to make this happen. This is a first step of a long process. Imagine a future. Imagine a future where scientists get 30% of their budget from, from the general public. Imagine, what, imagine the kinds of skills scientists would have engaging the general public. Because guess what? The kinds of skills you need to raise money from the general public is exactly the same skills you need just to talk to the general public about your science and why they should care. So how do we create this sort of engagement among the scientists? And it's happening right now. I mean, right now, the projects are being put together by the scientists. They're going live in 10 days. So the first is our blog, scifund.wordpress.com. It's, it's the most brilliant blog. I mean, let's be honest here. So you should all check it out. Um, it's got lots of tips. It's got lots of guidance there of how we're actually doing this. I pulled in all the friends I could find who know how to do video, how to do messaging. And they've all posted here, giving their ideas for scientists, how to do it. Um, but also, the scientists themselves who are involved are also participating helping to create a sense of community. We also put together a, a closed wiki where scientists are posting their draft projects and other participants are sort of giving feedback to each other. Another thing is we have a Twitter hashtag SciFund. We also had an email Google group. So essentially creating these sort of ways for people to engage and it's really working. Scientists are really, I mean, it's shocking how people have taken this and really, and really gone on with it. And we have some incredible projects coming up. Just looking at the draft projects, and I'm just going to pick out a few. One, you know, so here's one. So here's a dolphin, the one species of dolphin. Look at its dorsal fin, the top fin. It's backwards. If you think of a shark, it's usually, fin, it's usually, it's usually the other way around. Why is this dolphin's fin so weird? Here's another project. Yeah. <laughs> is here's another project looking at Rome, looking at um, the extracting DNA from Roman skulls to look at the dietary practices of uh, of Romans. Another project is looking at uh, is looking is trying to create an artificial leaf to to power for a new form of biofuel. So not biofuels like from soy or corn. Biofuels, like we're going to create an artificial leaf to create a new way of creating solar power. Another project, looking at coral reefs as, a, as the effect of climate change on coral reefs. So even though I'm an ecologist, the other people running, helping to run this are ecologists, a lot of ecologists are in this project, the participants in this are from across science. It's really astounding what's happened. So that's what's going on. And so look for it. It's, gonna, it's going live on Rocket Hub November 1st. Um, and the key idea here is to really learn the lessons. Because here's the experiment. We have about so 70 scientists going in at the same time on the same site for roughly the same amount of money. We're going to really learn what works, what doesn't work for raising money in, in, through crowdfunding for science. And the idea is we're, just, we're not just going to stop here. So take this and move on to larger and larger rounds somehow. <laughs> That's the idea. So, SciFund.wordpress.com. That's me. That's my Twitter address. And uh, yeah, thank you.